that's not gonna work guys what's up YouTube something a little bit different for you guys tonight I'm just gonna be uh, showing you guys my new uh, computer well used computer new to me uh, computer that I'm uh, upgrading for editing YouTube videos so I got a new GoPro Hero 7 black and I decided to step up my game for you guys and gals and I'm just going to be recording in uh, 2K now. Uh, 2K at uh, 60 frames per second. So I'm up in the resolution from 1080 to 2K. Uh, the new clarity, I think if you guys watched some of the last videos, is much, much better. Uh, much more enjoyable watching trail uh, riding videos in 2K versus the 1080 format just easier to see the trail and it's more clear so if you have the bandwidth you can stream uh, the videos all the videos moving forward will be in 2k format I still have some older footage I need to post uh, that will not be in 2k it'll still just be in the old 1080 60 frames per second uh, but tonight I want to go over uh, the new computer because the new uh, camera since it records in the new higher resolution uh, the new 2k format uh, it's a little choppy on my old laptop. I have an old, uh, it's an i7 laptop, it's a decent laptop, but uh, it plays choppy on there uh, when you try and edit. Uh, you can play the video, but if you try and edit the video, uh, it plays choppy in Adobe Premiere, which is what I use primarily for editing the trail blocker videos, is Adobe Premiere. So the idea is to upgrade a desktop computer uh, with a new uh, video card and a solid state drive and some uh, memory, some RAM to uh, try and get the video to play smoother so that I can edit the videos and keep bringing you guys uh, quality trail riding videos. So that's the, that's the project. Project is uh, trail blogging on a budget I guess is what you would call it. And uh, so I'm just going to give you guys a look at the rig. Um, all right, so the first thing I'll show you is the uh, motherboard and the tower chassis, the whole thing. It's a Dell Optiplex 980 uh, with an Intel i7 processor. So that was already all pre-built. Um, it came that way. And when I got it, it had two uh, 16 gigabyte uh, memory sticks, but um, Windows 8 or Windows 7, whichever it had when it came out uh, it would only recognize actually um, eight gigs I believe in um, each slot or I'm sorry it would only recognize four in each slot so originally if you looked at the manual for this computer um, it says that each of these can only take four for a maximum of uh, 16 since then Windows 10 uh, ultimate I'm not sure what version it came out but you can add more RAM now and each of these I believe will recognize um, 8 gigs. So the first thing I did, I, I removed the uh, smaller RAM chips, I believe there was a 2 gig and 2 gig and two 16 gigs. So I removed that, I put in two more 8 gig sticks and these 16's are recognizing as 8 so there's 4 times 8 there's now 32 gigs of RAM. So 32 gigs of RAM and um, Intel i7 processor uh, I forget what generation this one is it's an older generation but it is an Intel i7 processor um, did not have a very good video card that was actually kind of what started this whole uh, thing out and as you can see um, I did buy a ATI um, Radeon RX 560 it's a 4 gigabyte um, video graphics card and these are the uh, graphics cards that were in there um, previously. Um, these are just some Dell ATI uh, graphics cards. Um, they had the DVI and DisplayPort. And there was two of, two of them in there um, before. But uh, when I upgraded it to Windows 10, I couldn't find a, a decent driver for those. This is just another... Uh, this is for the computer in the garage. It's just a... Wi-Fi card that I'm working on uh, extending the signal out to the garage so it's a little bit better out there for streaming music and stuff while I'm 
uh, working on the quads. But anyhow, um, back over to the gaming rig. That was the video card that was in there. So I bought this video card to replace those two video cards. And it is a uh, XFX Radeon RX 560, a four gigabyte of, uh, of memory. And you can see it's got nice big heavy heat sink on there and a pretty decent sized fan. And it's got the HDMI, display port, and uh, DVI, three different uh, output ports. Uh, this is the original. So when I went to install this video card, um, I figured out pretty quickly that that video card is going to need a better power supply. And uh, not only did this one not have quite the specs, this power supply did not have quite the specs for this. But it also didn't have the right hookup. It didn't have the right uh, PCI Express uh, video uh, card connector, power connector for the video card, rather. Um, so um, if you read on here, flip this over. This is only a, I think it's a 350 watt uh, somewhere on here. If you read on here, it says that this is a, this is only a 305. And this says it needs a minimum of a 400 watt. So what I ended up doing was buying uh, this Corsair CX 650. It's a 650 watt uh, power supply. Um, it is modular, so it does have you know all the different little plugins. If you wanted to expand it, there's a lot of different uh, slots, and then it's got the main uh, board connector there, which I'll talk about in a second, and some other different connectors. Um, here's the pile um, of connectors that it, it comes with all these different types of cables and connectors pretty much everything you can imagine except for one except for This it's a little bugger right here um, So I found out that you know trying to upgrade this Dell Project balling on a budget trail balling on a budget over here um, I found out pretty quick that these Dell Optiplex 980s have this nice tiny little power connector. Okay, well it doesn't seem like such a big deal until you try and find a power supply that actually has that connector built onto it and you find out pretty quick that it's a Dell proprietary um, connector. So that little bugger right there, that little Dell uh, connector, I've been waiting, <laughs> very patiently waiting. Um, for this part to come in I went and found the part so I got the power supply I got the uh, oh and I got a, a solid state Samson SD uh, sol Samson solid state drive uh, 850 this is a solid state drive 250 gig solid state drive uh, so the, the video card solid state drive got the power supply got the RAM installed got it all ready to go got a nice fan here I didn't talk about this I got a thermal take uh, fan. I'm just going to mount it um, right to the back real ugly like so that it just basically exhausts all that hot air blows it all out Get all ready to go and then I find out this stupid connector won't work. So I think I have the solution for that I boot 24 pin to 24 pin mini adapter so hopefully that and that will make that work with that. Wish me luck, guys. So one thing I will say when I was shopping for this, I got this from Amazon Prime. There's, uh, there's a few different connectors of this style like this. And I will say that this one is for, uh, this is the Dell Optiplex. Uh, M, the tower style, the tower size is an M. There's also an SFF, which is a small form factor, and then the one they just call it a mini desktop, which is extremely small. So this is the M, it's the larger um, of, of them, they call it a mini desktop, it's not really very mini, it's actually the standard size of a, a desktop when I think of a, a desktop, but this is the, the M, the small form factor, and then the mini desktop. Um, 
So this one right here, it didn't actually say which it was for, but there were some different connectors and then reading the comments, it was pretty obvious that um, some of them would work for uh, the small form factor, but not for the larger tower like mine. And then, you know, vice versa. So I don't know which this is. I do have another one I went ahead and ordered. I'm just going to return whichever one doesn't work, whichever one I don't need. But I'm really hoping this one works. That or I'll fry the computer and this will be a huge waste of time. It'll be really, really bad. So wish me luck, guys. I hope this doesn't fry the computer. Alright guys, so I was finally able to get it to play smoothly. Um, I ended up taking back that video card. I couldn't get the driver to install. I don't know if it just wasn't compatible with the machine I have or what, but in the end I ended up getting this uh, GeForce GT 1030. It was a little over $100. It was kind of a cheaper video card. It only has um, it only has 2 gigabytes instead of 4 gigabytes like the AMD card that I was trying to use. Uh, but it works, it installed, the driver installed, and now when I try and play uh, the videos on my computer, they play smoothly. Alright guys, my build on a budget is complete. Uh, you can see I've got a video rendering in Premiere now. And um, just give you guys a look at my setup one more time, kind of give you a little summary of what I did. Um, I did end up taking back the AMD card. I got a PNY GeForce GT 1030. Uh, this is a fairly low cost video card. It was the cheapest one that I had at Best Buy. And um, I've got that installed. It did actually kind of fit in there a little bit better. It has a smaller uh, form factor. Uh, the metal heat shroud just barely fits through there. The, the fins almost meet there. It's like it was almost designed to fit perfectly right in there like that. So as the fan, as the air is blowing off of this one, it's going to meet with that. And then I have the new uh, larger um, LED fan in the back there that's just kind of exhausting everything out the back. Um, the power supply fan is, uh, of course, blowing downward there. So all the air, all the hot air uh, is basically just kind of coming to uh, right here in the middle where the larger fan just sucks it out the back. So I'm really, I'm pretty happy with the way that ended up. Um, of course the CPU fan is still uh, in the front here. Um, this is an i7 CPU. Uh, we've got the motherboard, the Dell motherboard. And then we added a Corsair CX650 uh, power supply. And then of course I went over it already, but we got the GeForce GT1030 uh, video card. I'm still using the integrated sound card. Um, I've got four RAM sticks at eight gigs each. That is the maximum this motherboard will handle. Uh, that gives me 32 RAM. And then we've got, of course, a uh, USB 3.0 controller that I added. Um, that's a USB 3.0 controller by Inatech. And that was probably the last thing I added. I wanted to make sure I had USB 3.0 support, so I got a PCI Express. Um, I think it actually is in uh, where they had the uh, onboard Wi-Fi uh, card uh, option. If you wanted to add that, it would go in the PCI Express slot down there um, on the motherboard. So that's the uh, Inatech uh, USB 3.0, and it's a five port I believe and for the hard drive I'm using a Samson uh, Evo 850 solid state drive uh, this is the one I use for editing the videos I have another solid state drive that was on board already uh, that I use for the operating system so that's a look at my build guys um, I do have a 24 inch Dell monitor uh, that I recently acquired I used to have a 22 inch I just got this Dell 24 inch I also have these uh, Mackie Studio Monitor speakers. Uh, they're really nice. They're self-powered, and it just basically is tied into the back of the computer um, with a mini uh, headphone jack to uh, 
RCA. All right, guys. Well, I got the budget build PC all together, and uh, it's working. So happy that I can actually edit 2K footage now and not have it stumble and stagger. Uh, I do have to play it back at one eighth uh, resolution, but it does work in Adobe Premiere. Uh, it does play smoothly, which is totally awesome, and uh, I'm super stoked. So my budget build PC, it was a success. And uh, I went ahead and zip tied the fan to the back of the tower there to keep it nice and cool because um, these new 2K videos, um, I do leave them uh, processing overnight. So they take quite a while uh, to process and I want to keep it nice and cool. So I did went ahead and put that on the back. It's kind of an exhaust fan just below that hot air out the back of the tower. All right, guys, so here's a cost breakdown of the Trail Blogging on a Budget PC build. Uh, my Hero 7 uh, video editing PC. So the first thing I bought uh, was the used Dell Optiplex tower off Craigslist. That cost me $150, and that included the i7 processor and 8 gigs of RAM to get me started. So here's a look at the original tower. This is very similar to the tower that I started with. Um, you can see right here, uh, it's a 980 with 2.8 gigahertz i7. So there's, there's one that we started with right there. And then we added this power supply. Uh, this is the 650 watt power supply. Uh, that ran me $60 to add the power supply. Uh, it's Corsair CX 650 watt power supply. Um, after that, I added some more RAM. So I added uh, two more eight gigabyte uh, RAM sticks. These aren't actually the RAM sticks that I bought, uh, but these are pretty much the same thing. Kingston value RAM, eight gigabyte uh, DDR3 RAM. So I added two of those. The cost for me was about $110. I was building this. I just happened to be building it around uh, the same week as uh, Black Friday. So um, I was able to take advantage of some Black Friday prices. Some of the prices have changed a little since I, I made the PC. Some of the prices are a little different than when I recorded this video back when I built the PC, which was on uh, Black Friday. Around the time of Black Friday, things were a little bit cheaper. Some have come down actually in price since then. Um, the solid state drive that I bought is a Samson 250 Evo uh, solid state drive. This is the drive right here and I paid about $52 for that. Uh, next moving on, I got the video card. Uh, the video card's actually come down in price a little since I purchased it. Um, it's only listed as 106 here on Amazon. Um, I actually paid a little more than that. I paid $120 for that same card. Uh, the power cable, this is the power cable that I got. Um, it's actually come up in price. It's $11.25 now. Uh, but this is the 24 pin, the mini power uh, connector that allowed me to go from the power supply over to the Dell motherboard. So these are the things I would consider required if you were going to do a build like this. And the project total came to right at $500. These uh, components down here are what I would consider optional, but they are recommended. Uh, this $500 price didn't include the price of... Uh, my monitor or my speakers, keyboard, and my mouse. Um, I already had all those things. I just needed to basically upgrade my main computer, my main tower, and that was the goal. I had $500. I wanted to see if I could build a PC that would edit these GoPro videos uh, without having to buy a whole new computer, which could have been a thousand, maybe two thousand dollars for a computer that would do what I needed it to do. So uh, some other things I bought uh, was the PCI Express uh, USB 3.0 expansion card. Um, I'll give you guys a quick look at that. Uh, this is the PCI Express card right here. Um, really simple to install, just plug it in. It didn't even need any drivers and that gives me four uh, USB 3.0 uh, ports which are much faster than USB 2.0 and it really speeds things up. I think I see transfer rates of about 80 to 90 uh, megabytes per second. Uh, so in addition to the PCI Express 3.0 card, um, I also got the 3.0 extension cables. These are just basically since uh, the port for my uh, PCI Express card was in the inside of the computer where you can't actually reach it, 
Uh, so I needed a cable that just would get that to the outside of the computer. And so I purchased a couple of these. This is the two pack of the USB 3.0 extension cables. Um, I purchased a uh, hard drive earlier. This was something I had from before, but you wanna go ahead and pick yourself up a good external hard drive so that you can uh, store your footage. You don't wanna clutter up your hard drive on your computer. You wanna keep it on an external drive. Keep that backed up in case your computer crashes or something, you don't lose all of your footage. Uh, so something I recommend is a Seagate two terabyte uh, USB 3.0 drive. This is a good one. I have a couple of these uh, that I use for backing up my GoPro footage. One last thing, um, in addition to the uh, USB 3.0 card and the USB 3.0 cables and the USB 3.0 storage drive is to make sure you get yourself a USB 3.0 uh, micro SD card reader so that when you go to transfer uh, your files from your GoPro to your computer, you're not sitting there waiting all day for them to transfer. Uh, USB 3.0, uh, you stick your little micro SD card in there, you stick that in your computer and you can transfer over like I mentioned before. Um, I think my computer transfers right around 80 to 90 uh, megabytes per second, which is pretty good compared to uh, the USB 2.0 memory card reader I was using before that. The most I ever saw was around 40 to 50 megabytes per second. It would take me nearly an hour just to empty the footage um, off of the GoPro. Whereas with this, it only takes about maybe 10 or 15 minutes and then all of my footage is on the computer and I could start editing almost right away. So that's a look at my build, guys. Uh, I hope that was helpful if you're trying to put together a GoPro editing rig on a budget. Um, I'm actually really happy with my build on a budget. So far it's been really great to be able to edit GoPro videos without having to uh, downcode them to a different format, different size before I could edit them. I'm able to edit them right there, just drag them right into the timeline and uh, get to work. So there it is guys, I've got another one exporting right now. It has two hours remaining two hours and 11 minutes and then of course i'll probably need to upload overnight because they are pretty large files and then you guys will have a new video to watch so thanks for watching everybody uh, look forward to another trail blog video uh, probably tomorrow and please don't forget to subscribe um, share this video like it and please hit the bell icon if you want to be notified of uh, future trail blogger episodes